A bombshell breakthrough for one of America's most notorious unsolved serial killer cases. Police arresting Rex Hewerman last night for the Gilgo Beach serial killings. The grisly set of murders of almost a dozen women that's haunted law enforcement for over a decade. Back in 2010 and 2011, New York authorities discovered 11 sets of human remains strewn along a suburban Long Island beach highway. Hewerman has been arrested in connection with the first four murders. Their bodies were all found in burlap sacks along the beach in December 2010. Another six women and a toddler were found in the following months, and police will see if Hewerman had any connection to those killings. Today, he pleaded not guilty to six murder counts. Officials say they won't stop until they solve all the killings. Rex Hewerman is a demon that walks among us, a predator that ruined families. And if not for the members of this task force, he would still be on the streets today. However, even with this arrest, we're not done. Cops linking him to murders through DNA left on a discarded pizza box. The accused killer was an architect, married with a daughter and a stepson, and his neighbors are stunned. The guy's been quiet, never really bothers anybody. Um, you were kind of shocked. It's crazy. It's mind-blowing. It's, you know quiet mass people park <laughs> i've had small talk uh with the gentleman because um, he would do like woodwork just you know average guy living in you know suburban neighborhood so this case was cold for a very long time how did detectives put it together um, ultimately, it was resurrected a couple years ago by a task force that had been reinstated there on Long Island in Suffolk County. And they linked together some circumstantial evidence that included a green truck that he drove that was registered to his brother. Um, and they finally linked it via DNA evidence, good old DNA evidence that seems to be resurrecting and identifying a lot of these perps from these seemingly cold cases. I talked to Paul Morrow today earlier on my Fox True Crime podcast. He was an NYPD detective and he worked in the intelligence as an augment to the task force back in 2010 when they were first searching for Shannon Gilbert's body. And he pointed out that back then the perp used to call the families and taunt them. And it was always the same time of day, the same day of the week from a payphone or phone around Midtown. So back then, authorities were trying to ascertain, trying to triangulate where these calls were coming from. And at the end of the day, advancement in DNA genealogical forensic evidence has brought us to this point, like we saw in, in Green River and Spokane Serial Killer. I want to point out one important thing here, that while today is absolutely cause for appreciation for law enforcement celebration, this is one step in the road to actual victory and closure. This is an arrest, an identification, not a conviction yet. And we don't know about all those other bodies that were discovered with different types of manners of death and the different types of victims. MOs can change. We saw that with the Spokane serial killer, right? People argue, no, 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 this body can't be him. He always used a gunshot. This was no plastic bag. MOs develop as serial killers learn and develop what gratifies them, what things they can get away with, what manners are more efficient. So here it might be one person and he evolved in the manner of his gruesome killings or there might be many. So I just put out there, I know law enforcement works tirelessly to ascertain who is responsible for all those bodies. And I know that we can count on the community support as well for appreciation in this moment and for continued support to identify the, any additional murderers behind all the discoveries of all of those bodies and yet another reason not to defund the police because it goes toward detective work too and cold case research. It is not all about Beat Street that the left loves to hammer. What did you make of the neighbors just shocked that they've been living next to an accused serial killer for over a decade? It shows, and I, I would agree with Emily's last point around um, this is the first step and hopefully this is the first step A domino dominoes will keep falling here. Uh, I listened to, well, to your point, he looks like someone that could be your neighbor at work. He could be your neighbor in your, in, where you, in the community you live. He could be your neighbor in the community where you may, you know, take your kids to the Boys and Girls Club, wherever it may be. So this is, um, it's frightening and startling in that regard. Uh, I have to tell you, the, watching all those police officers, federal, uh, state and local officials there in that press conference, 
um, is is painful. Is some so, you know we, it was a long press conference and it had to be painful for the families. I was so moved when all of them offered their condolences to the families, the surviving family members, uh, and. and I was moved as all of them talked about the cooperation that they all had in this in this lengthy investigation. Um, police officers and those in law enforcement never gave up here, uh, and their faithfulness and their thoroughness to this case uh, should should. If there are others out there, Emily, that participated, that that someone else that 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 was involved in this, they should know that this task force uh, in this community uh, that our resolve uh, will will not be exhausted here. Uh, and then we will find them if indeed he's not the only one. Emily mentioned the guy was making calls to the victims' families yeah. from work. Yeah. How sadistic do you have to be to do that? How sadistic do you have to be to Google child pornography, to Google torture porn, as he did often on his computer? 200 searches for these Gilgo murders in just four months. And he even point blank Googled the question why hasn't the Long Island serial killer been caught? trying to figure out how they were narrowing with cell phones, narrowing what incredible police work from 1,000 phones to 100 phones to a handful of phones, then that green truck, as Emily mentioned, and then the DNA evidence. Uh, this is a sick guy. He's described as a demon that walked among us by the police commissioner. How eerie that is, because when you talk to some of his colleagues, he's described as social, a big talker, standout, very personable. Apparently, if he was in a room, he would seek out and make sure he talked to every person in the in the room. But there was something very weird and odd about him even so. Um, I feel for his wife. I feel for his kids. Their lives are changed forever. Um, of course, it's innocent until proven guilty, but what a victorious day for those young women's families who have been tireless in pressing for answers. And this has been a big case in the New York area for quite some time. That's true, and it's been it's good news for Fox because this is the same neighborhood that Brian Kilmeade is from, and he's now no longer a person of interest, <laughs> which is even. which is good. Saying we can cross him off, cross him off the list. Just but just I'm not joking. <laughs> we, I, I still have my suspicions, but I, I always like watching law enforcement when they get when they do the press conference because they thank everybody, and it reminds me of like the Oscars, the Best Picture. Except these people are real, and these people are heroes, and they and and it, that you can see how much it means to them, and uh, they're not a bunch of pompous actors. It's actually the real thing. Uh, uh, this guy went to Burner High School. Did you know that? That's also the high school uh, that Billy Baldwin went to. So I think another winner here is that Billy Baldwin can say he's not the biggest loser from uh, <laughs> Burner High School. It's actually, he can't, I mean, being a failed actor is nothing like being a serial killer. It is weird, though. He, you know what this reminds me of? You know how they always say Law and Order, the TV show Law and Order? Uh, their stories are ripped from the headlines. This is like a headline ripped from Law and Order because generally, you know, the serial killer, uh, you know, you know, in, in in Law and Order always turns out to be, an, you know, the white middle class architect, and everybody went for the wrong person first and got him. But this is exactly has that TV twist where it's oh, you know, he was known to be quite personable and probably you know was smarter than the average bear, but you know, you know, kept a low profile, and there he is. Can I See, say, another tall serial killer, yeah. by the way. We talked about this. Uh, exactly. And can I say the, the reason why they become serial is because of that, that lack of memory that everyone has in uh, being associated with them. They are non-memorable. Yeah. They are not someone that stands out in Kill personality me. or physically. <laughs> so that's partly why they are able to fly under the radar, because they are sort of mundane. That's why. And that's also why, by the way, when you upload your DNA, it's not 23andMe, it's not Ancestry.com, it's additional sites, and you have to toggle. You have to choose actively to toggle to release your DNA so that you can help cold cases like this, because otherwise the privacy concerns have extinguished all of law enforcement's efforts in that regard. I think, too, I mean, it's like, it, this is the problem with sex work in general, is that those are the kinds of, of, of yes. you know, uh, victims you can choose because it's essentially we've made them apart from society. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're estranged from their family, and, and so uh, they're, they're specifically chosen they're, for that reason. Easy prey. Easy prey, yeah. yeah. And, right. and Emily's point about technology and the growth in technology and how that, that those improvements help us get here can't be understated either, so... Right. Are you saying we should give our DNA? Yes, I believe firmly. I, yes, I believe firmly you should. Yes. Well, we already I did, do. and I'm 0.1% black. <laughs> but I don't know if I toggle, don't <laughs> tell the feds about it. Did we toggle me? I don't know. I didn't do your <laughs> analysis. We'll ask Johnny. We'll ask yeah, Johnny. Exactly. Yeah. So in a week, when he All gets right. back. Well, if I ever commit a felony, they got me. <laughs> Coming up, AI disrupts another industry. Hollywood actors going on strike. 
Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.